Hi, I'm Ron Polk, designer of the Polk Workbench and the Total Station. So I have a small project to build a couple of floating shelves for a friend of mine. And the first thing I need to do is design it in SketchUp. Before we get there, just as a reminder, um, the Polk Holmes channel, my channel for Ron Polk, has over 200 videos all about woodworking and uh, tool design and using your tools and just all kind of helpful tidbits about uh, contracting and also uh, do-it-yourself projects. So be sure you get over there and take a look and when you get over there realize you can click on playlists and in those playlists I try to combine a lot of the videos uh, how they go together so you can click on those playlists and then um, uh, go through and and uh, watch the videos in order. Okay, so to get started, I'll open up uh, SketchUp here. I've already created a file called Floating Shelf. And so these are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, what I'm going to start with is putting a couple of guidelines in to help me draw. These are not part of the model. They're just uh, reference points. So I'm going to hit the T key for tape measure. If you look at my um, large toolbar over here, you'll see whatever I hit a letter, it'll highlight the tool that I'm using. So you can come over and just click on these as well. So I'm going to start by just clicking here and I know that I'm going to make, uh, this is for the plywood that I'm going to cut out of three quarter and overall shelf is going to be 36 inches, but I'm running an inch and a half uh, wide piece of oak trim around the edges. So that's going to add or I'm sorry, it's a three quarter inch, so it's gonna add an inch and a half in the overall length. So I'm gonna uh, make it 34.5, enter, and that's inches. And then I'm going to make it about seven and a half inches, so 7.5, enter. And then I'm gonna hit the R key for the rectangle tool, and I'm going to just click on the reference points there and double click right click and i'm going to make it a group and then i'm going to go into the group choose the surface hit the p key for push pull come up 0.75 enter and so there i have the one of the building blocks of the shelf unit set up and ready to go i need another one of these so i'm going to hit the tape measure tool grab the bottom go up in the blue direction and you can see it can sort of go in any direction but once you get it going in the direction you want, in this case blue, I'm going to hold the shift key and now no matter what I do it will stick in the blue direction, the up and down direction. And you can see the, the reference here, blue is up and down, green is back and forth and red is, is this way. So I'm going to come up and I know the overall uh, trim that I have or the material that I'm going to make the trim out of is two well it will be two and a half inches close to that so i'm going to put i'm going to just move it up in that direction click on it and go 2.5 enter and now i will take the uh, before i move this up and copy it i do want to have some spacers in here as part of the structure so i'll probably make those out of some um, scrap pieces of uh, three quarter inch um, ac ply that i have so what i want to do is i know that so i'll hit the t key for tape measure and I'm going to leave a hollow section in the back, you'll see in a bit here, that's going to be four pieces of three-quarter plywood. So four pieces is three inches. So I'll go in the green direction, click, type in three, enter. And then um, these uh, little strips will be, uh, because these are inch and a half, and so that's, um, or I'm sorry, they're three-quarters. So that's an inch and a half overall. And I know that the... Overall height is two and a half, so that leaves me one inch. So I will just come in and go in the blue direction, type in one, enter. And I want to go, um, see, I'll just put one right on the edge, and then I know that stuff's three quarters. So I'll go that direction, 0.75, enter. And that gives me just some points um, to be able to draw my rectangle to. So I'll uh, hit the R key for rectangle. I'll just go right here. I'm going to that point and just going to reference up and go and get. You can see how it kind of references there where you get that square. Click on that. And so you see how I didn't fill in. This is a mistake, but rather than um, uh, 
you know, edit it out, I'm going to show you. You can see how I didn't get, it didn't fill in. And, and drawing in 3D can be confusing sometimes because you're looking at a 2D screen. So you think you're drawing in one direction. So it's good to watch those reference points. So I'll get rid of that, hit Command Z. And uh, to give myself a, a point to draw up straight on, make it a little easier, I'll put one right on this corner. And then I'll go ahead and go out, 0.75, enter. So now I have some good reference points to go off of. So again, back to the T key for tape measure. And we'll come up. Actually, I want the R key for rectangle. And we'll go up in this direction. And you can see where I, what I want to do is reference that. And you can see how the intersection is there. So when I come up, I can find that intersection by touching on it and then going here. And so I have the um, surface there that it's going to just be some little rips that I'm going to make. And I'm going to double click, right click. I'm going to make a group. And then I'm going to go into the group, click on the surface, hit the P key for push pull. And all I have to do is come and just touch this edge and that'll align it up perfectly. So I've got that. And then I want a second one of these back on right on this line. So I'll leave uh, from the back edge to there will be hollow. So I'll just click on it, hit the M key for move. And I want this edge to align there. So I'm just going to grab that corner. I'm going to move it over. You can see how it's moving it. All I'm going to do is tap the option key and it puts a little plush by it. And now it's copying it rather than moving it. All right. Now I'll go ahead and get rid of, I'll go to edit and I'll delete guides. I'll go ahead and do a file save. And so what I'll do next is grab this bottom shelf. I just want to again, hit the move key, tap the option key. And I want this bottom edge to reference right to the top. And so if I've done everything right, I'll take my tape measure and go up and I'm two and a half. So I'm right on there. All right. So I've got the structure. And what I'll do is, uh, there's a number of ways to install a floating shelf. He doesn't want any brackets underneath. He wants it just sticking straight out of the wall. And so you can buy brackets uh, that are metal brackets with rods and you drill holes and fit them in. Um, you can just get some electrician's uh, conduit and, and mount those in the studs, drill holes, and then run them out. That works really well. But I'm just going to take... Um, four of these exact uh, pieces here, and I'm going to take the first one, I'll go ahead and make a copy here, move, tap the Alt key once, and I'm just going to move this out to there. So um, this piece here, I'll move it out, I will take it to the job, so I'll have, the, I'll have all four pieces loose, I won't have them laminated together, and I will take this first one, and I will find the studs, and I will use nice long screws so that this piece is solid. And then I'll take each additional piece and screw it with long screws onto this piece so that I have a pretty rigid, this is a pretty light shelf. It's just holding some antique staplers in his office, it's kind of a display shelf. But uh, that should work well, and it'll be pretty easy to do. So I'm going to Command-Z, put that back. And now I want three of these. So I'm going to hit the M key, hit the Alt key for move, copy, I mean, and I'm going to move it over till it locks in. So I've got that. I've moved a copy. Now, without doing anything else, I know I need a total of three. So I'm going to hit X, three, enter, and that just filled in. So that's a way you can uh, replicate things. All right. So um, again, the structure now is all together. In fact, what I'll do just to keep things right, I'm going to click on these three and right click, and I'm going to make a group. So now that's a larger group and each of those is a group inside so if i move this um it's it's all connected together because that piece is going to be floating it's not going to be permanent to the to the shelf all right so now all i really need to do is take a piece of trim and go all the way around the three sides here and this is the main point of the video um, there's a tool called follow me it's a very easy to use tool it's a very powerful tool but sometimes it can be confusing and I've had some trouble with it and I've had to go around and figure out what am I doing wrong. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I figured it out and I'll show you quite simply. Now what I need is I need a profile of the trim I want to use. Now 
I couldn't find any oak trim that I liked. So what I did was I bought a piece of uh, one by six. So the net was just a little, you know, about five and a half inches. I'm going to cut that down to two and a half. So I have two pieces. And then I'm going to put some kind of detail on it. Now I could draw a small rectangle that's three quarter by two and a half. And I could take the line tool and the arc tool and make some shapes and create a profile. But I'm not going to do that. That's another lesson. And it would take a while to show you that. What I am going to do is just download a profile. It's not going to be what I actually do in the shop, but it'll be good enough for um, showing you how to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on this little kind of open box icon. It's the 3D warehouse. It's right inside of SketchUp. And it will take me to where I last was. Well, in fact, because I had closed it, it took me back to the home page. So on the home page, I'm just going to type in um, molding profile and there you can see it's got a bunch of different moldings and these come in really standard moldings uh, that you would use in any construction uh, job so I'm just kind of going through here looking for something that would look good on the edge maybe that flipped over this one here maybe flipped over want the thicker edge on the top these are probably more base type moldings but I'm just kind of scanning through and looking for something there's a chair rail that could work this uh, chair rail could work inverted, uh, this one as well. And so, and then you can, there's kits and here's uh, some panel edging. So there's lots and lots to choose from. And I'm just sort of scanning for um, something that would come close to what might look good. And you can see they just go on and on. Okay, we're getting into kind of the look I want. Okay, so I'm going to choose this one. Actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to choose this one. And I'm going to download. So when I click download, it'll ask me, do I want to put it right in the model? I could um, download it somewhere else, but I'm going to click OK. And so now I have the all the parts and pieces. I only need this one profile. So I'm going to um, go into that group. I'm already in it. I'm going to hit explode. I'm going to get rid of, so I'll click off of everything, click on the trim itself. I don't need that. And the cutout, I'll uh, get rid of that, most of it anyway. All right, so now um, I have this uh, profile, and what I want to do is just for now, I'm going to make it a group. So I'm going to click on it all, right click, make a group. And now I'm going to go in with the move tool by hitting the M key. And you can see if I click on these, I can rotate it. Well, I want to rotate it from this edge. So if I go to this edge, I can find it. And I'm going to rotate down to 90 degrees. Um, it's important again to look at the numbers because uh, it will look straight up and down. But if you look over here in the right corner, it says 90. So that's what I want. Now I want to rotate it 90 off this top edge. So I'll just find that, do the same thing. And that looks good. All right, and now I'm going to hit the move key, grab this corner. I want to line it up just the way I would put it on um, the trim. Now you can see it's too short. I could maybe add a second piece, but again, I'm going to be making this myself. So for now, I've got it highlighted. I'm at the S key for scale, and I'm just going to scale it. And it may look a little funky, but uh, I think you're, you'll know what I'm doing here. All right, so there is... Um, the follow me tool. Okay, you can see I did not get that right. I'd put it on 15 degrees. So I am going to fix that now. Again, I'm not, uh, I'm not looking at what I'm doing here. I'm just trusting my eye and you can't really can't do that. So I got to come over here and now I'm on zero. Same as 90. Okay, so now we're back to where we want to be. So what I want to do is I want to draw that shape around the three sides. And so the way you cannot do it very efficiently is to go into it, click on the surface, hit the P key for push pull. So that looks great on that side, but it, it won't follow you around the corner. So I could come in and draw it here and then draw it on the other side, but then I'd have the miters to worry about. So we'll go back 
And we're going to use the follow me tool. That's this tool right here. It's kind of a little curve. It says follow me when I hover over it. The follow me tool needs a path. It basically needs a line to follow. That line could be a circle. It could be a curved line. It could be angled lines. It doesn't really matter. It just has to be a line. So you would think that I could come in. I want it to go around here. You think I could come in, go into this group, uh, click that whole surface, then hold down the shift key minus that and minus the back one because I don't want it there. And that leaves the three lines that I want. And now I should be able to click on the follow me tool and click there, but nothing happens. And so that's been one of my frustrations. Why won't it do that? Well, it's because this is in a group and once it's locked in a group, you don't have that path anymore, even though it's you can see it there, it's, it's part of the group, and so it can't be used that way. Now, I could explode this and then choose those, and it would follow me fine. The downside to that is then the trim would be a part of this shelf geometry, and I couldn't separate them. So we don't want to do that. So the easiest way to make this work is to go in and take your line tool, your pencil tool, by hitting the L key, and I'm not in any group. I'm just going to click on this corner. It's a reference. It's not attaching itself to that group. It's just a line. And I'm going to draw it around to where I want it. Okay. I'm going to hit escape. So I've got those three lines. Can't really see them because they're laying right on top of the shelf. But they're there. Now the other thing I need to do is this is a group right now. And you can't follow me a group. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to explode that. The reason I grouped it before is I wanted to move it around. And I wanted to make sure it stayed you know, perfect. So the next thing I need to do now is I've got that exploder. So I need to select those edges. So now, and I know I'm selecting that because if I was selecting the group, this whole thing would light up. I'm going to hold down the shift key for the add minus, go there, hit the H for the H for the hand key, and then go back to my select tool. I'm holding down the shift key and I'm clicking on that line. Now I'm going to hit the hand key again, the H for hand, and so I've got those selected. I'm going to go in and choose the follow me tool. And all I need to do is click on that. And that's it. So that looks pretty simple, but it can be frustrating if you don't follow the fact that it has to have a path. And it has to, um, the, the path is on its own. It's not part of a group. And also the profile that you're using cannot be grouped either. So if you remember those two things, you can do lots of interesting stuff. If I go uh, Command Shift and come away from there, if I take this and I'll just select the whole thing, hit the Move tool, and I'm going to tap the Option key, I'm going to copy it over here. And then just for the sake of finishing up, I'm going to come back in, I'm going to select those lines again. And then I'm going to click on the Follow Me tool, click on it, and that's done. Okay, and now the one more thing I need to do here is I need to click on all that geometry. So I'm going to triple click, one, two, three, and that selects just that geometry. It doesn't select the shelves or anything. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to make it a group. And now everything is separate, so I can, uh, if, if I'm doing a much more complicated model and I needed to take it apart and do a cut list, I'd be able to do that. So all the geometry is independent. But the other thing I just wanted to show you, if I take this and I come and I take my circle tool and I draw a circle and then I highlight the line on the outside and actually before I do that, I'll take this and I'm going to move it over next to that there. And then I take the follow me tool, actually I'll select the line again and I'm selecting the outside of the circle, not the inside. So I'm going to grab the follow me tool and click on that. And you can see it followed that perfectly. So you can do all kind of interesting designs um, with this. All right, certainly don't need that. So I'm going to get rid of that. And so now I am ready to go down to the shop and build this. Again, when you see me build it, and I'll make videos of it, um, the trim detail will probably look different, but it'll be all out of oak, and I'll stain it to match his office, and we'll go from there. Well, if you like these SketchUp videos, these videos that show you how to use technology and woodworking, 
Um, be sure to like the video, share it with others, and also uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to set a workbench plans like you've seen me use in so many of my videos and you'll see me use when I build this, uh, you can also click on the link right here in the video to download, to go and purchase and download a set of plans. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.